So there's some key concepts when we think about dynamic systems. One of them is emergence. The, a complex biological system such as ourselves or, or such as anything that's organic is, it follows the laws of physics, it follows the laws of chemistry, but those laws don't do a very good job of explaining why we see what we see. And when all these things come together over a continuum of time, because remember they're constantly changing, as they're continually happening, something emerges or the behavior that we see or that's observable is what we call emergence. And that's, that's something if you, if you decide that you're going to read a little bit more about dynamic systems and nonlinear dynamic systems, that's a word that's going to come up often. The other word is self-organization. Because as we initially look at some of this information and we look at uh, all these different systems, it seems chaotic. And chaos is another word and chaos theory is another part of dynamic systems that we often hear about. But the whole idea of self-organization is that we have these local agents, okay? We have these smaller pieces of this big picture that are acting and reacting with one another that over time will come together and organize something that's a little bit more of a macro or a global view. When you're observing a client's movement, there's all these things that are, are occurring at the same time. And the end result or the self-organization that we see are based on a lot of things. We have a tendency to kind of think that it's because uh, your hip flexors are tight or you're overpronating on this foot or that sort of thing is, is ultimately the underlying cause. In reality, there's so many things going on at one time. The self-organization of the human body might say that that's the way that we need to move right now. And as we look at that and we understand that, we can see that by looking at just one of those local agents, if we're just looking at that subtalar joint, that we're not really getting the full picture of how all these different parts of the system are interacting. This is a starlings video. So starlings are small birds, and this is a really cool looking uh, blank picture. So if you've ever seen starlings flying in a flock, they go through these very interesting patterns, right? And we see the same thing in ant colonies and beehives, right? There, you have ants one after the other, or you have bees moving through the, through the hive that are not necessarily thinking about what the other bee 100 miles up road is doing. They're looking, they're acting and reacting to the ones closest to it, okay? But through that interaction, we ultimately produce what's more of a global or what emerges the self-organization or the patterns that we see. So if we were, again, go back to the idea that there's a specific, oh, here they go. So that entire cluster are individual starlings. And as they are moving through and creating all those different observable formations, it's because the local guys, the local birds, are interacting with one another. But what happens? We have this beautiful, kind of picturesque, dynamic formation of all these birds moving through space. And that's really a, a wonderful example of what a dynamic system is all about.